Hello and welcome to the 11th lecture in this series. This lecture is going to look at some of the details that we can see in historic stonework. So it's very rare to see a stone building that doesn't have any ornament. Um, even the most humble of buildings has some ornamental stonework, either to form corners or to create windows or to allow one shape of a building to meet another. And most ornament of stone buildings is taken from necessity, that is, it developed from something that was actually required. The details that we see in stone on historic buildings has its roots in protecting the building from water or weather or impact or the requirement to make straight lines around doors and windows. So this lecture is going to look at some of those commonly found details. And if we look at a traditional house, or the end wall of a house, we can see that there are a number of uh, decorative items. So top down, we've got chimneys and tabling, gables, down right the way down to the bottom where we have our plinth. And each of these items can become a decorative piece of stonework, even though they have a functional basis. So the chimney stack's obviously there to take the chimneys and to lift them up a high level above the ridge of the roof. The tabling is there to act as coping over the top of the wall and shed water from either side. The kneeler supports the tabling stones. The jam stones are forming a straight line around the window and allowing the window to be fitted. The sill sheds water. The string course is another device to be able to drip water from the face of the building. The coins provide a square edge to the building, and the plinth helps protect the building from impact. And coins can be decorative. Sometimes they're much more decorative than the wall that surrounds them. And usually they're formed from a dressed stone, so there's much more work being put into the coins than the stone around about them. And it's not unusual in historic buildings to see a random rubble wall with ashlar coins. Where we have a string course running around the building, its function is to drip water away from the face of the building. And it's usually got a slope top and it can be finely carved. Um, but down at the bottom, there will always be a drip so that any water that collects on the face of the string course can drip clear. Round about windows, we would get decorative stones and dressed stones. We would have jam stones, which are cut so that there's a rebate for a window to fit into them. And usually every second stone stacked up would go to the full depth of the wall to allow the two sides to be joined together. The sill underneath there, usually in better buildings has tabling or a ledge at either end so this slightly raised part allows for stonework to be built up off it and stops windblown rain from entering the building and underneath the sill because it possibly projects further than the building there would be a drip this image shows the tabling that we would see to a typical gable and we have our kneeler stone at the bottom, which provides a support for the tabling. And the tabling would be dressed stones that go the full width of the wall and would project any water that was sitting onto there or fell onto there um, back out either onto the roof surface or to the wall below. And when we think about stonework, we tend to think about fine decorative stonework. But fine stone carvings usually restricted to expensive high status buildings. The more difficult it is to carve a stone, the more expensive it will be to produce it. Marshall College building in Aberdeen is an imposing neo-Gothic building built in 1835. And the stonework's particularly fine. It exhibits a high level of decoration. We've got a lot of lacework, carved pinnacles and fine ashlar stonework. By contrast, if we look at Provost Skeen's house, also in Aberdeen, it's one of the oldest buildings in the city, and there's very few decorative features, except for some dressed coin stones 
the drip course running around the chimney stack and some applied decoration. This building would have probably been hurled originally, it would have been rendered, so we wouldn't have seen any of this stonework, so it becomes less important to make it a decorative feature. And at the heart of all decorative stonework, we have the stonemason and the skills that were required to be able to produce um, stone that was dressed and was square and would fit in with other stones. And if we go back a couple of slides and look at Marshall College, the quality of the stonework there relied on skilled individuals to be able to produce uh, fine quality stonework. And we can finish stonework, or the mason can finish stonework in a number of different ways. We can take an ashlar block and depending on how the tool is applied or the amount of work that's into it, we can create different surfaces. And that relies on the ability to be able to read the stone when it comes out of the quarry and be able to uh, finish it in different ways using different tools. And when the buildings that we've looked at um, within this lecture were built, this was primarily done by hand. When we're thinking about stonework, it's important to note that a skill that has gone back many thousands of years has developed its own terminology. And as students, you should take an opportunity to look at some of the resources that are available to you, which will give you guidance on some of the terms that are commonly associated with stonework. So in conclusion, all historic buildings exhibit some form of decorative stonework, and these elements are usually developed from functional requirements. Finer buildings tend to have more impressive stonework, but even humble buildings will probably at least have some aspect of stonework which has been developed beyond a purely functional design. So aspects you should take from this lecture are that stonework has its own terminology, that most decoration is derived from function, that ornate carving is directly related to cost and status, that squared and dressed stones are often used where sharpness of line is important, and that stonework can be finished in a great many ways for decorative effect. Okay, thank you very much for listening, and if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask.